Webster's Dictionary defines a right as something that a person is or should be morally or legally allowed to have, get, or do. It seems today our culture is obsessed with defending rights. Whether it be gay, civil, or women's, we are constantly fighting so that people of different genders, races, and sexual orientations may have equality. According to Wikipedia, in the United States alone, there are approximately 80 gay, 50 women's, and 50 civil rights organizations. In fact, one of the main pieces of legislature that helps govern the United States of America is a document entitled the Bill of Rights. We can become so concerned with making sure that our rights are guaranteed that we often forget about the three billion people who have never even heard of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And to have the opportunity to hear of Jesus is the human right. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 2 Peter 3, 9, But he is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And John 1, 12, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. I believe there are three things that will help us as individuals and as the church accomplish the goal of making sure everyone is guaranteed the right to know Jesus Christ. First, we must develop a passion for the lost. Second, we must deny ourselves. And third, we must do something. First, we must develop a passion for the lost. Throughout the New Testament, we can see many accounts of Jesus' passion and also his compassion for the lost. Matthew 14, 14 says, and he was moved with compassion for them. Luke 7, 13, when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. One of Jesus' greatest displays of passion for the lost is found in Matthew 18, 11 through 13, when he reminds us that the reason he came was to seek and save those who were lost. He was willing to leave 99 other sheep in order to chase after one who had strayed. The only way that we will ever have the same passion that Christ had is by spending time with him. 2 Corinthians 3.18 says, So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. As we spend time with him, we will be changed into his image. And as we are changed into his image, we will develop the same passion that he had for the lost. Secondly, in order to make sure everyone is guaranteed the right to know Jesus Christ, we must deny ourselves. The Bible is filled with scriptures that tell us we must die. Luke 9, 23, then he said to them all, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow after me. Galatians 5, 24, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Lastly, Galatians 2, 20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Even Jesus stresses the importance of denying ourselves in order to work in the kingdom of God. Luke 9, 62, Jesus replied, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Denying ourselves is not a one-time ordeal. The apostle Paul said it best when he said, I die daily. And lastly, in order to make sure everyone is guaranteed the human right, we must do something. James 4, 17 says, If anyone then knows the good they ought to do and doesn't do it, it is sin for them. Romans 10, 14 then tells us the importance of going and preaching the gospel to those who have not heard. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Jesus' great commission to go and make disciples of all nations, found in Matthew 28, 19, was not a suggestion. It was a command. I believe that if we develop a passion for the lost, deny ourselves and do something, eventually every creature will have the opportunity to know Jesus Christ. One of my favorite verses is found in Acts 20, 24. But my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news. It is not another organization's job, but our command as the church to make sure everyone is guaranteed the greatest right, the human right, the right to know Jesus Christ. Thank you.